So let's talk about cross-site scripting. You see some labs here and the classic one I've got loaded here. This is the classic thing. You can search for something. So if you search for Apple and click search, then on the next page it has Apple up here. So it's reflected back the data you put in. And if you try putting HTML tags in there like Apple and then say italic sauce and search for that, the sauce turns italic. So it's not filtering out tags. So you might be able to run active JavaScript. So you can put in stuff like this script alert one slash script. And when you search for that, it pops up a box. And that's usually what you do to prove you have the ability to run scripts, which is a vulnerability. Those scripts could be stealing your cookies and sending them to a remote server or doing other actions that JavaScript can do. So that's the simple reflected cross-site scripting. Now here's one that um, is a stored cross-site scripting vulnerability. That one was reflected. You send up a search query and the next page echoes the search query back to you. This one is stored. So you have to submit a comment. And this one is arguably, well, they're both kind of dangerous, but the reflected one bounces back to the person that makes the request. So if I wanted to attack somebody else with it, I would have to like send them a link and get them to click on a link. And then that link would have to include the attack. Here, I can attack many people by storing my comment. So if I go to view post and there's a place I can add a comment, now I can put in a stored cross-site scripting in here. So I can put in that, um, oh, that's not it. Let's put in script alert one. Thought I, oh, I didn't put it in the, uh, all right. There's my script. Might need a semicolon there. Let me put it in. So probably the vulnerability is in the body here. So I put that there and I'll give it a name and some kind of email, a at b.com and a website. Okay. So if this is right, I'm leaving a comment, which is not, and now everybody that views this page will have that script happen. So all the viewers will run that script. So this is a way you can attack many people. All right, that's stored cross-site scripting. And the next one is document object model based cross-site scripting, which is similar. And what this does is it uses um, the search query tracking functionality. It uses a document write function to write to the page. And that's called from location.search. So it seems a lot like the previous ones. And I found it very confusing when I first heard of DOM-based cross-site scripting. But the point is, if I search here for Apple and search, then the URL up here contains search equals Apple. And the Apple that goes here is copied from there. So you can put the cross-site scripting up there, script alert, and now load this page and it will copy it and put it there and you see it doesn't run. It's being encoded so these less than and greater than signs don't take effect. So you have to use a more subtle attack. And the attack is um, search for this and the reason, so we can check. Let's inspect the element. Uh, find out why. If I inspect this apple Say, why did this apple not, um, not, why did the script not run? And the answer is zero search results for Apple script. Uh, and I think there might be another apple. Let's see if I can find a search function here. Perhaps control F. Yeah. Let's search for Apple. There's one there, but there's another one. There's an apple down here where it is an image source tag that includes that term. So if I put in a quote to end this quote and a greater than sign to end this image, I can then put in a tag. And that's why the answer is to have the quote greater than and then some kind of injection. And you're using 
scalable vector graphics on load is another way to do it. I don't think that's essential. So you put that up here. There. Quote greater than SVG on load. This should make the script run. And so it does. It pops up. Now, by the way, I say I don't think you need the SVG on load equals alert one. I think you can do script alert one. Alert one semicolon. And slash script. There. Let's see if that works. And uh, I don't think it popped up, so let's see if I can figure out why. Oh, things vanished up there. That's kind of disturbing. All right. Anyway, the uh, let's see if it's in this page at all. Let's view. Let's inspect this again, and then look for Apple again. Control F to search, and then Apple. And there are no apples. Oh, well, that's rude. Okay, looks like a lot of search stuff vanished up there. All right. Uh, fair enough. Anyway, this one worked with the SVG, so that's what I wanted to show you. More cross-site scriptings, and there's many, many versions of cross-site scripting that work in different circumstances.